Hey everybody, welcome back to another Reasonable Price Prediction, the series where we try to figure out where your favorite altcoins could be headed. Now today we're looking at the big dog, the one and only Ethereum. Now we don't often look at Ethereum on its own on this channel. We usually put it together in a bit of a bitcoin -y video and a whole crypto space type of video. It doesn't usually get its own thing. And while today we will still be looking at the Bitcoin Ethereum chart, because I do that with all altcoins that we take a look at on the Reasonable Price Prediction series, we will mainly just be focusing on Ethereum. And I'll try my best to not talk about the general crypto space and what the Bitcoin Ethereum chart means in terms of other things. I'll mainly try to focus and keep it on Ethereum. However, no promises because I love to ramble when I get to that chart because it's such a cool chart. But right now we're on the Ethereum US dollar pair. As we can see, I've tried to keep this as simple as possible. In terms of trend lines and stuff like this, we can see we have our bull market support band turned on and we have our halving dates. Here is another little important thing that I wanna look at. And well, it's not really important now, but again, it will be important in the future, so I'll leave it in. Um, it's just basically that at some point, Ethereum after the bull run, it returns to a low somewhere not too far from where it broke out from after the halving. We can see that here, it's a 600% move. Uh, up to this line where it eventually retraces back to and if we go to the last cycle we can see that it is also a similar type of move of 300 400 give or take uh, so again it's decreasing again we always talk about diminishing returns in the crypto space and as cryptocurrencies get bigger we can expect less potent moves but we can still see similarities in terms of how the price has performed especially in terms of just pattern i mean this last cycle has played out very similarly to the current cycle we're in where we have after the halving, we move around for a little bit, have an explosion into the bull run, have a serious retracement where we return back to this level, and then we slowly trend up for the pre-halving year and halving year, and then the cycle repeats where we have our extreme move up, extreme move down, retrace to our level that we talked about, and then trend up for the pre-halving and halving year. And then of course, what happens after that? Well, last cycle, we saw a strong move up immediately after the halving. The cycle before that, we saw a bit of a, a bit of a pullback actually before we went up into our bull run move. So currently we could see either. Now you could argue that we had this pullback here was equivalent to this pullback here. So whatever happens, we usually do see some sort of a major pullback, whether it's just after the halving, like we saw here, or just before the halving. I would probably prescribe to that, that we will get some sort of a pullback. Like we can see that at least after the halving or leading up to the halving or around the halving, we spend a lot of time on the bull markets under and above the bull market support band in there and abouts. What we've seen so far, well, not so far, what we saw last cycle, a similar thing below, above, below, above, below, above, every few months dipping above and below. So far, what have we seen here? We've seen a very similar thing below, above, below, above. You could say that we're due a below, potentially, and that could be in the form of a big move like this, or it could be in the form of still a big move but over a longer period of time and not as harsh i still think we'll see something like this personally and even though this first cycle ethereum didn't really go above and below that much it kind of just went straight up had a bit of a pullback and went straight back to going straight up uh, we still did see a bit of oscillation above and below the support band of course another thing to point out as well is the time it takes for ethereum to go from this strong move up to where it retraces back to this resistance that turns to a support that eventually leads into our pre-halving and halving trend line. This first cycle took 85 weeks, which is just under there and about a year and three quarters. And here it took about 76 weeks. So about a year and a half. So again, similar time frames in a sense, both of them being very long periods of time, basically, but just something to be aware of maybe in the future. Um, I always like to talk about much further down the road than uh, what we're currently experiencing with these cryptos because I like to get the seed of thought in your head early because while a lot of people will be focusing on the bull run, and a lot of people will be focusing on their bull run strategy, which is a good thing to focus on. It's also very good to be aware and have in the back of your mind the potential moves that Ethereum will make once it's put in its all-time high, once the hype has started to die down or reached its peak and that's when things start to to kind of crash really you know once ethereum is putting in lower lows and lower highs i want people to have some sort of an idea of when that could be and also what they might want to do and that starts now not when we're at the top you know or at least that's what the best investors do they start now not when we're up here um, and kind of trying to figure out a plan uh, while their asset is crashing anyway kind of enough rambling just be aware that from sort of where we are now if we take it from here say we're a few a month or two away from the halving we have approximately give or take two years until we reach our high from this point. 
And if we make a similar move of 26%, sorry, yeah, 26x move up, which I don't think we will see. I don't think we'll see as drastic of a move. But if we do see something similar from where we currently are, it will probably look, it would look something like this, bringing Ethereum to $6,250. Oh no, excuse me, 62,000. So Bitcoin's all time high, basically, which me personally, I don't think is possible. Now Bitcoin went from, what was the previous high, like $13,000 to uh, $60,000 just above last cycle. So maybe Ethereum could move from a $4,000 top, sorry, basically $5,000 top up to like a $25,000 top. I don't think that's unreasonable. I think Ethereum will outperform Bitcoin uh, this cycle. Not by much, but I, I think it will outperform. I think you'll like, uh, we, we'll go into the Bitcoin ETH chart soon and you'll see that a lot of people have already started moving their Bitcoin into Ethereum because now is about the time historically when people like to move down the risk curve a little bit more and put their Bitcoin into Ethereum because, you know, they speculate that because Ethereum is a riskier asset than Bitcoin, has a lower market cap, has more utility perhaps, uh, they predict that Ethereum will do better than Bitcoin during the good times. And then during the bad times, Bitcoin is expected to hold up better. So we will start to see that rotation of capital. A little interesting thing here, if we zoom into where we currently are, we've had these few weeks where we've held above um, a support. We have wicked down below, but we've ultimately closed every week above. And we are quite a bit above now. We're a couple, well, we're about $60 above from where this line is. This line is at 2,170 US dollars and our current price is 230 US dollars. If we zoom back to our first cycle where we didn't have a COVID scare during this time or uh, any sort of black swan event that caused a major crash leading up to the halving. We can see we had a similar play where we moved up and spent a few weeks staying above this similar support line. If we check how long this went on for, we can see it was 17 weeks. And if we come back to here, it will be a bit longer, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 21 weeks, but still a similar time frame that could potentially play out. So we are looking more similar in terms of leading up to the halving to this first cycle. And I will remind you, this is when Ethereum was at $7, $8. So um, yeah, imagine how rich you could have been. <laughs> but that's uh, futile. The only thing you'll do thinking of that is drive yourself mad. Um, I think that about wraps up the US dollar chart. If we then move to our Bitcoin pair, again, you're probably thinking, what the hell is going on? Uh, there's stuff everywhere and it's a complete mess. And you would be right thinking that it is a complete mess. However, for me, again, I think this chart, the Bitcoin Ethereum pair is so important, so important. And when I leave this chart, I want to make sure that when I come back to it next time, I'm able to figure out what I deduced or at least uh, assumed the last time I looked at it. And if you've watched our Bitcoin Ethereum videos before, you'll notice this does look a lot different from how it previously did. You might laugh, but I've actually tidied it up a little bit. <laughs> So um, if you want to see what it was like before, go take a look <laughs> um, at one of those videos. Um, but getting straight into it, these white and blue lines signify the time we spend at a, a, a price that is below 0 0.055 BTC, or at least this cycle, uh, this is what it signifies. And this white line is the 0 0.055 BTC. Uh, it's important because it's where basically uh, Ethereum enters a bear market on its Bitcoin pair. Uh, we can also see that I have this red line here and this is the measuring of the range uh, that Ethereum and Bitcoin operate within during this cycle. And we can see it's 0.0718 of a Bitcoin is the range it operates from. And we can see these green, uh, this green line is our resistance and this red line is our support being our lowest points and then also more or less being our high of that cycle. It is slightly above, but well, I mean, this is actually part of the cycle. So no, it is the high, excuse me, um, I'm waffling. And then if we zoom into what we currently have, we will see that it is basically the same thing. We have our support, we have our resistance, we have our line that cuts it 45% in the middle from our low to our high. So even though these have different percentages, and they have different amounts, they do equate percentage terms to the exact same in terms of low to high. So that's something to keep in mind and make sure you don't get confused with. And that's how, you know, what this white line represents, the 0.055 Bitcoins level is now this line here. They're the same, basically. They're 45% drops from the top. And then of course, this is just a range measurement of where we went from our low to our high. So the range that Ethereum and Bitcoin have operated in. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, 
um, and is very important to point out for Ethereum is that when we have our halving, these orange lines aren't the halving, they're just the midway point between where we enter below 0.055 Bitcoins and where when we break above 0.055 Bitcoins. So this isn't the halving, but funnily enough, it does, it's not really that close, to be honest with you. Uh, it's about six months off here. And here it's about, you know, six months off again, actually. So um, there you go, bit of an interesting indicator. So about 22 months after we enter this low, the halving roughly takes place, which is interesting. What is more interesting though, is halfway through bang on, we do see a reversal, or we did at least see this last time. And if we zoom in, we can see we have this downward move that Ethereum follows a strong downward move from basically 2019 to 2020. And we put in our low just before this halfway point. And then we also see the trend start to reverse once we put in this low. So as soon as we put in this low, Ethereum begins to trend upwards. What we also see after we put in this low is Ethereum puts in a strong move up. Now let's take a look at today's current climate. And this blue line is where we're starting from. So this blue line again, equivalent from here, where we enter below this range. It doesn't quite play out the same way here because we're taking it in terms of time base. But we do see that we have broken down sometime very close after this range and slowly traded down. And now we've put in a low. But what's interesting is we've put in our lowest low so far, our local low, after the halfway. But again, during a similar time, but afterwards, there's a few, there's a couple of months of a discrepancy there. But what have we seen once we've put in this low here? We see an, we see an immediate pull up. And what happens here? An immediate pull up. What happens after that? An immediate pull back down of about 50%, just over. And what have we had so far? About a 50% about pullback, basically. And it actually lines up, give or take, with the lows, the highs that we were at, sorry, before we reached this very low point. And where were we basically now? If we zoom in, we are more or less at these highs, give or take. It's, it's not part and parcel, but it's very similar in terms of how it's moving and the pattern it's following. Now, if we're going to assume that these are similar times, we can assume that Ethereum is probably trending upwards from now on, on its Bitcoin pair, which is a good thing. And again, it's about the time when a lot of people start to move their Bitcoin into Ethereum or move parts of their Bitcoin positions into Ethereum. Again, depending on the investor. I like to hold Bitcoin throughout the whole cycle and sell during the bull run year, even though I could probably trade it all in for Ethereum and make more money. I would much rather just have a bit of Bitcoin just in case, because I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that Bitcoin will always perform well. However, it isn't always sunshine and rainbows. What happened last time is we still had, even though we had these pullbacks and these strong moves, we did basically come back down to this low, this all time low. And there is a strong chance that we do. I mean, we're not too far away. We saw a very strong move about three weeks ago, but now we're not too far away at all. And I think we will probably come back close to this line. But ultimately, I think we are close to the lows of the cycle. I don't think we'll break too far below this if we do. Again, I can always be wrong, but that does seem like the time based capitulation and the percentage we've moved from sort of where we were at the start of this four year cycle to where we are now is give or take the same roughly in percentage terms and time based terms. So for me, that's quite a strong indicator that I would feel comfortable taking a small risk on and moving Bitcoin into Ethereum because I'm sure both assets will perform well. What can we expect from here on out? Well, Ethereum does perform well against Bitcoin, as we can see. And basically, as we draw to the end of this 32 month period, which is also here, we can see Ethereum basically breaks back above uh, this resistance, this sort of bear market territory. And do I think it's possible for Ethereum to move from current prices up 30% on its Bitcoin pair in the space of over a year? Uh, I do. I personally think that because in a year's time, we are at the start of a bull run, potentially. We could already be a few months into the bull run. There's talk of Q4 of, of being our bull run uh, this year, which I, again, I'm not really sure. I have to spend a lot of time thinking about that. Uh, it could play out that way, who really knows? But I definitely think there's room for a 30% move. I think there's possibly room for a higher move and we might have to maybe reassess this level here that I've put um, because things change. Things don't always play out the same and it's worth looking into. And then of course, historically, if it is to play out in a similar way, we have roughly 61 weeks, give or take a year and a third or a year and a quarter, excuse me, of bullish price action where we are in a high range on the Bitcoin pair. And that means that as well, usually the price is doing very well on its US dollar pair. So in terms of a game plan, you might want to draw from this 
now could be the time to move parts of your Bitcoin portfolio to Ethereum. And then as even more time goes on, you might want to move that Ethereum into altcoins. But I don't think it's the time for that yet. I think the time to do that is closer to the halving. So maybe March time or April time, you might want to move your Ethereum that you've moved from Bitcoin into altcoins, but then you're going well down the risk curve and there's a good chance that your altcoins might not do anything this cycle. Again, it's very up in the air, very up in the air, but I do think it's very interesting. If you guys wanna look at this chart, uh, pause the video, take a look, do your own analysis, comment down below what you find. If you think I've done anything wrong, which I probably most likely have or something I haven't noticed, I always try to make notes that I want to talk about in these videos, but I kind of, <laughs> but I often get like so caught up in what I'm talking about and the interesting points that stick out to me that I often forget uh, which points I wanted to cover. So if there is something, I will uh, talk about it in the comments if you guys uh, spot it, because I, I probably have uh, at least written down about that point or thing. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, another thing I will add probably for the next video is these uh, cycle lengths as well. If I just clone this quickly and throw that there, take, uh, we can see again, lines up. And I will also, uh, just so you can see as well, because it might help you visualize stuff, this here, just rough and ready. And I will also throw this here. So you have a, a rough idea of, of um, how it played out last time compared to this time. Thanks very much for watching, guys. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Consider signing up to Fairdesk with the link in the description. Not only do you get a deposit bonus, but you get reduced trading fees and it gives a kickback to the channel. So if you want to go trade your Ethereum Bitcoin pair, you want to move your Bitcoin to Ethereum, consider using Fairdesk again for their deposit bonus and low trading fees. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Take care and peace.